you've heard about it all over the place. This idea that summer is somehow going to kill off the coronavirus. Whether it's from friends, family, or even the President of the United States. They're working hard. Looks like by April, you know, in theory, when it gets a little warmer, it miraculously goes away. I hope that's true. But could it really be so easy to defeat COVID-19? If we extrapolate from what we know from the other viruses, historically, yes, most outbreaks do slow down in the summertime. That's Louisa Petre from Mount Sinai Hospital in New York. We do have an outbreak right now in Iran, and we have cases in Singapore and Australia. So that kind of would go against this assumption. This makes one thing clear right off the bat. Warm weather might slow down the spread of COVID-19, but it won't stop the disease. COVID-19 transmission occurs when small viral droplets spread directly between people. Like if someone coughs and you inhale it, or if those droplets got on a surface that you touch before touching your face. This is very similar to common colds, which some coronaviruses cause, and the flu. From what we know about these more common viruses, they tend to have a harder time spreading in warmer, more humid weather like we usually see in summer. To understand why, let's start with those droplets that spread the virus. In general, when it's more humid and someone coughs or sneezes, droplets like the coronaviruses tend to absorb moisture from the air. This weighs down the droplets more quickly, forcing them to the ground sooner. All of this means that those droplets tend to travel less far from the infected person and that they have a lower likelihood of staying suspended in the air for any length of time. And of course, that means they're less likely to find their way into someone else's nose or mouth. But when those droplets land on the ground or various surfaces that others might touch, they can remain contagious. Early studies looking at the coronavirus in perfect lab settings suggest that it can survive for quite a while depending on the surface. We've learned that the virus can survive on paper and cardboard up to 24 hours and on uh, smooth surfaces like marble counters, metal or plastic, it can survive up to three days. But those are laboratory conditions. In real life, it's probably much lower than that. Warmer weather might make it just a little bit harder for them to survive on surfaces. The sweet spot for coronavirus right now, it's established around 48, 50 Fahrenheit. And what happens at higher humidity and temperature, the viral particle becomes unstable and breaks down and it's less contagious. It's important to note here that this number does not come from looking at the virus under a microscope, but instead from researchers at a Chinese university analyzing statistically at what average temperature COVID-19 spread most during the early weeks of the outbreak in January and February 2020. So the study is not saying that the virus just spontaneously combusts above 50 degrees Fahrenheit. In fact, we know it continues to spread. These researchers are just asserting that it spreads less effectively. In a study funded by the National Institutes of Health, the University of Maryland took a closer look at the COVID-19 pandemic to try and get a better idea of whether this reasoning played out on a global scale. According to the study, COVID-19 has established significant community spread in cities with average temperatures between about 40 and 50 degrees Fahrenheit and low humidity. Those cities experience similar weather patterns and are roughly distributed along the same latitude. And at the same time, they observed a lack of significant community spread in other cities with similar proximity and travel to areas with outbreaks. One huge caveat on both of these studies is that they are preliminary, only looking at the virus's spread through February 2020. They also need to be peer-reviewed and scrutinized by the wider scientific community. But regardless of how the virus responds to temperature, our summer lifestyles might play a more significant role than we realize in why viruses seem to recede during the summer. Also, there are other factors that play a role here. One is people's behaviors. They stay more outdoors. They cluster less in uh, small, uh, poor ventilated areas. And also in winter months, people do have a little lower immunity. We have less vitamin D, less vitamin C, 
and definitely those are related to robust immunity and how we fight viruses. Another perk of people spending more time outside is that even if they cough and spread droplets, the virus might not linger for as long on every surface. If those droplets happen to land in sunlight, the UV rays from the sun can actually make the virus inactive. Because of these two factors, experts suggest that the summer may help fight COVID-19. But we simply cannot wait until summer to address this pandemic. We don't have time to wait until summer. We're in the middle of an exponential outbreak and waiting until summer would be too late. We'll have too many cases and too many uh, casualties by then. The coronavirus is also so new that we really just don't know exactly how it will behave in warmer weather. We can make predictions based on preliminary studies like the one above or other viruses that we know more about, but the coronavirus could still surprise us. Officials from both the Centers for Disease Control and the World Health Organization have made this clear. We've only known about this virus for eight weeks. Um, we have no reason to believe that this virus would behave differently in different temperatures, which is why we want aggressive action in all countries to make sure that we prevent onward transmission. But to, to look at seasonality, you need to look at patterns over time, um, and we do need some of that time. Plus, just assuming this virus will be seasonal can prove problematic. SARS, one of the closest related viruses to our current coronavirus, did not demonstrate a seasonal pattern. Neither has MERS. Also, a new virus introduced to a population spreads differently than ones that have been in the population for a while. This is because many people have already become immune to those older viruses, thus depleting the number of individuals that those viruses can infect. This helps explain why those older viruses are seasonal, because that's when conditions are most advantageous and they get access to more non-immune individuals. A new virus, on the other hand, doesn't face this immunity hurdle and can therefore spread through the population without this seasonal limitation. Then there's the fact that, even with the viruses we know are seasonal, they don't go away forever in the summer. They just recede a bit into the background, still transmitting between at least some people in the summer months, and then they come back in the winter. Think about it. It's still possible to get a cold or the flu in the summer, it just tends to happen less frequently. Also, it's not summer all at once everywhere in the world. Just as one summer ramps up in the Northern Hemisphere, another winds down in the Southern Hemisphere. And that allows the virus to thrive in different places, which would make it hard to stamp out what is now a global pandemic by just relying on the weather. So what's the takeaway? Unfortunately, even in the best of circumstances where this coronavirus proves seasonal, it can't do enough to get rid of COVID-19 for us. Instead, combating the coronavirus relies on people around the world to engage in techniques like social distancing to help slow this pandemic down. And then we can all hope that those efforts get a little helpful boost from the weather during the summer. And of course, first and foremost, make sure you follow the latest guidelines from the CDC on hand sanitizer, hand washing, and prevention of COVID-19. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, help us out by liking, subscribing, and dropping us a comment. And to stay updated on Cheddar's latest, hit the bell next to that subscribe button too.